republic for which you stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, City Council, Mayor Burkhoff, and audience, and to those who have joined us via Zoom. Uh, this is uh, the City of Romulus City Council meeting, and today's date is August 3rd, 2020. At this time, we will have roll call. Councilwoman Abdo. Here. Councilman Barton is excused. Here. Councilwoman Roscoe. Here. Councilwoman Talley. Here. Councilman Wadsworth. Here. Councilwoman Webb. Here. And Councilwoman Williams. Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Madam Clerk. This meeting is also being uh, broadcast via the Zoom meeting app. And for those that are watching or would like to join uh, this meeting tonight, uh, the meeting ID number is 838-3684-281. Again, the meeting ID number is 838-3684-281. If you'd like to participate by phone, you can dial in at 1646-558. 8656. Tonight's meeting agenda is as follows. Number one, agenda. Number two, minutes. Number three, petitioner. Number four, chairperson's report. Number five, mayor's report. Six, clerk's report. Seven, treasurer's report. Eight, public comment. Nine, unfinished business. Ten, new business. 11 communication and number 12 adjournment and a motion will be in order to accept the regular council meeting agenda as presented so move to accept the agenda as presented support it's been motioned by miss abdo supported by miss roscoe to approve the uh, agenda me meeting for tonight miss abdo yes miss roscoe yes miss webb yes. miss williams yes mr wadsworth yes. chair votes yes motion approved 2A for approval are the minutes from the regular meeting held on July 27th, 2020. Um, um, Madam Chairman, I'll move to, to approve the, the minutes of July the 22nd, 2020. Support. <coughs> Motion by Mr. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Webb, to approve the minutes from the regular meeting held on July 27th. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. 2B, for approval are the minutes from the public hearing held on July 27th, 2020. So move for approval of the minutes held on July 27th, 2020. Support. <coughs> In motion by Ms. Abdo, supported by Mr. Wadsworth for the approval of the public hearing meetings, meeting minutes held on July 27th, Ms. Abdo. Yes. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Ms. Webb. Ms. Williams. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Madam Chair, if I may, before we uh, continue on, I'd like to announce that the meeting ID number, uh, again, is there was one digit that was left off, so I'd like to repeat it again for those that um, would like to join this meeting electronically. Sure. The meeting ID number is 838-3684-281. Again, 838-3684-2813. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. There are no petitioners Madam. on the agenda this evening. Number four is the chairperson's report. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, before I get started, I want to read um, read into this uh, the, the governor's order. Just read, um, do a brief reading over here. Effective July 29th, 2020. Governor Whitmore signed into law executive order number 2020-160 to comply with the order 783. If it is indoors, the gathering or event does not exceed 10 people. The Romney City Council Chambers cannot exceed 10 attendees at any time. For the viewing audience and those, those participating via Zoom, I uh, want to assure you that we are following the order. Only el eight elected officials are in the Council Chamber this evening, as was reflected during roll call by the City Clerk. 
The Romulus Cable Department is filming the meeting live remotely and with the assistance of our city hall entrance health screener, only up to two people from the public are permitted in the council chambers at any time. Those wishing to speak under an agenda action item will permit in the council chamber during the agenda item and will exit once action is taken by the city council. Members of the public wishing to speak under public comment will be permitted to do so and will be called into the ch council chambers in the order in which they submitted their request to speak under public discussion to the health screener at the city hall entrance this evening. As we have made available for several months, the public will also have the ability to speak to the city council via Zoom as published by the city clerk. Lastly, in accordance with Governor Whitmer's executive order number 2020-153, effective July 17, 2020, item 2K, the requirement to wear a face covering does not apply to individuals who are given a speech for broadcast or to an audience, provided that the audience is at least six feet away from the speaker. Therefore, the elected officials are not required, required to wear face coverings when seated for the city council meeting. It should be noted that not only are elected officials seated socially distanced in excess of six feet from the audience and each other, the city added sneeze guards because between each elected official for added safety of the officials and the public. And I just want to thank the uh, city for all that they've done to keep us safe. Again, as I said a couple of weeks ago, they've gone above and beyond keeping us safe as we came back into the city council chamber. So thank you, Mayor, and your team for that. And then even just, um, just adhering to the new order from the governor. So we just want to thank you for watching out and keeping us all safe while we're here in the chambers. Um, and then we'll, um, and that's all I have as far as the governor's order. Um, I want to keep continued prayers for Mr. Barton as we, he's not here again. We want to keep his family and his prayers in, con in prayers um, as he is still out of town tending to family business. So let's please keep him in prayers. Send him a call, shoot him a text, let him know that you know you're, we're thinking of him and you're thinking of him. Um, the other thing I would like to talk about is the census. Um, I got some great news today that we broke the 70% mark in the city of Romulus. Everybody else is still in the 60s teetering. We're above the national, we're above the state, we're above the county uh, levels. We broke 70%. It was at a flat, right below 70% for several weeks. We, um, we were just flat. It was just really no movement, but we did break 70% this past week. And then I was just informed by Jasmine Dancy that we have our census material in that we're gonna start getting out all over the city to really pump up the need to fill out the census. This is an opportunity now to get the funding we need for not only our city, but across the state of Michigan. We need this funding. We'll, we'll not see this opportunity again for another 10 years if we do not uh, um, get on top of this right now. So please spread the word, not just to people, who, I mean, people, if you've done it, awesome, great job, but spread it to people who have not in other cities, counties. We gotta get this across the state of Michigan so that we can get the funding we need for our state, our cities, and our counties. So thank you for that, and Jasmine, thank you for that information. Um, I also want to um, just put out there, we've had a couple of outages in the last several weeks. I had a, a resident contact me and ask if I could make an announcement in the case when we have outages, if we can all just plummet DTE with phone calls to let them know um, to be responsive to the outages. I know we've had a couple of, in the last couple of weeks, some uh, major storm, um, storm <coughs> and they just asked me to please, when we have these, if we have the, when we have these outages, we pray don't have them too often, to please plummet, um, bombard DTE with calls so that the uh, problems are resolved um, quickly, as quickly as possible. Um, and outside of that, we, I think everybody up here received the ordinance that we requested at the last city council meeting. It should be all at our desk, so we have that in hand. And outside of that, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to accept your report. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Webb, to accept the chairperson's report. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Uh, Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Number five is the mayor's report. Good evening, city council, clerk, audience, and our listening audience at home. Uh, this week, I just wanted to uh, wish a happy birthday to uh, Councilwoman Williams and Webb, who both uh, share one on the fifth, so enjoy your birthday. All right. Um, 
And then we wanted to make you aware that also we do have some team members that have called in the Zoom call, so as our chairperson mentioned, to accommodate the governor's orders. So uh, throughout the meeting, if you do have questions, uh, chief of staff, uh, Jasmine, attorney, and others, so um, if there are questions we need to throw at them, just because we couldn't have them physically in the room, uh, they are on the call. Uh, and with that, actually, there's a, a, a short report that I wanted to have Jasmine Dancy give if she's on the call to both kind of give a quick update and then since really the the action item that uh, I'm bringing to you tonight under item a is one that she's been working on um, uh, quite a while uh, and we're pleased to present to you here tonight uh, I'll let her do a, just a brief intro uh, and then I'll get on and, and ask for the action for that item so uh, at this point uh, if you're there Jasmine I'll turn it over to you She there on? Well, you always have a plan B, so what I'll do is I'll leave the room ask her to come in so we stay within the number because mm -hmm. she was calling in from over there so if you'll give me one second I'll be ever right back here okay evening I guess I was having I was being heard on zoom but not in here so I apologize for that um, again thank you guys my name is Jasmine DNC here for um, director of marketing and community development and I did just have a short piece of good news to share uh, before getting into the mayor's action item and that was just to uh, kind of share about our first community movie in the park drive-in style that we had this past Friday um, we held it at a different location and we do want to uh, send our appreciation to Romulus Community School Board for approving our request to use their field, um, which was back behind the Senior Center on the open lot between, on uh, Olive between Grant and Bibbins. And uh, we just had a really nice turnout. We showed the movie Sonic, played some games ahead of time, passed out prizes, and um, everyone's cars were plenty, you know, probably 16 feet at least apart each. Um, they had plenty of space for each family unit to have uh, either stay within their cars or um, have their chairs out in front. And it was just a really, really nice time uh, for everybody. So we're looking forward to doing that again on the last Friday in August and the last Friday in September uh, with those movies to be determined at this point. But uh, we'll definitely keep you updated as that moves forward. So. Um, so I just wanted to give a thank you also to my team, Mike and Tanya and Roger and Maria, that helped get that set up, and it was a great evening for everybody. So that was uh, a little bit of separate news prior to uh, the mayor's action item. So um, let's see. So uh, I'm so happy to have Steve and Wendy Harmon here with us tonight. We've been working with them since last September was the first time you guys had walked through and seen the firehouse building. And uh, Steve and Wendy are not only Romulus residents, but they're well-established business owners, and um, they've shown great initiative and uh, patience, and I want to thank them for that as well, um, and bearing with us through this process of getting the building uh, ready and, and the lease ready to be signed, which um, is before you, you council tonight. So um, I've included a little bit of information in your packet about each of them, and there are separate businesses. But again, they are husband and wife and Romulus residents. So um, kind of bringing the family all under one roof, <laughs> hopefully very soon. 
and uh, we're looking forward to having this lease approved tonight so that they can move forward with their plans. As you did see in the lease, there is uh, a couple of last improvements to the building that the city, uh, as, as it is our building, it's our responsibility to uh, get those last improvements made so that they can also be making their improvements simultaneously. So we don't foresee that having any issues um, in holding up their business process either. So. Um, Steve and Wendy are here tonight as well if you have any questions for them but otherwise we're looking forward to your approval and really thank you for your consideration. Madam Chair. Thanks Dan. Mr. Wadsworth. I've got a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, number one I have to I've, I've got a compliment meant you both that you want to move in the same building and be together every hour of every day. <laughs> <laughs> but and this is a good positive thing for a resident and for the building but the, you know uh, Jasmine the question I have is the amount of four hundred thousand dollars to do the improvements outside, and that's not coming from the residents' property taxes, correct? No, that was actually done a explain couple. That, explain that, please. Yeah, sure. the The four hundred dollars approximately was actually a grant that we received from Wayne County CDBG funds, leftover funds that other communities had not utilized. We gave them a proposal; they approved it. And so that was all county CDBG funds, nothing from the city general fund. Okay, and one more question for Steve. Is, is this going to be um, just repairs or sales and service? That is my question. No, uh, mainly it'll be, I build custom motorcycles. Yeah, I've seen the pictures, they're yeah, beautiful. I build custom motorcycles, so it'll be mainly custom work, but I do accident repair. You know, I don't do anything like mechanical. I do basic maintenance, so it won't be engine work or anything like that. It's just basically building custom jobs. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay. It's a good project. Miss right Williams? I would just like to uh, add to what Jasmine said. You're good. Um, that that $400,000, uh, the former council uh, supported that, and that's when um, the other restaurant, the barbecue restaurant, was going to come. So definitely it's not uh, taxpayers' money. It's uh, where it's taxpayers' money, but through the county, through grants. So uh, I think it's a wonderful thing to bring a business, and especially a resident-owned business, to the city. Uh, it's a lot of motorcycle riders. We got one, Bob McCray, mm -hmm. and uh, this guy does some awesome work. He done some work for my daughter. I was so glad she sold it. But uh, <laughs> he does some awesome work, some one-of-a-kind uh, uh, motorcycles and uh just all kind of things, and he's a great guy. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true, and so welcome to our city. All right, very good. Anybody else, questions? I got a couple questions. So when are y'all gonna get started? I know there's still some work to be done, but when do you anticipate the uh, Motor Shop of Peace opening, you thinking? I'm just waiting. I'm waiting on as soon as the, the new doors get put in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the only thing that's holding me up is I, I don't have access to the building. I got you. Okay. So, I mean, even the way the building is now, I mean, I can literally go in and set up. Electrical is in, the lights are in. Um, once I get in, I'm going to, you know, paint. Mm -hmm. Without exterior and interior in the building. Um, and that's, that's it. I mean, I'll, mm -hmm. everything that I need, I, I have already. Okay. Right? That's my biggest issue. Right. Right. Gotcha. No, thank you. I'm sorry. Is, is um, there going to be an outside lit sign advertising the building? or? Uh, in the front, I mean, you look, whatever, you know, you guys approve, I'll put a, a sign out in the window, i put an awning. Just do what you say. Something like what, what Cross the Street Bull got on his building. Sounds good. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Ms. Williams? Yes, and I, w I would be wrong to leave the wife out. So <laughs> as soon as you open, I definitely will give you my number because <laughs> I need my hair done. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, you know, we, we're, we're together all you know, we've been together for years. I met, I met my wife, Wendy, when she was 19, and we've been together since our first date. Mm. You know, so it's... <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's... It, it, it's more convenient mm. for us. Mm. You know, I rode by, I was, I don't even know, I was riding by on my motorcycle, and I seen the sign out in front of the building, and I just kind of passed it up. And then I came back a couple days later and started making a couple phone calls, and then I got a couple 
jazz man. It's totally what I wanted to do, and we've been moving forward ever since. Awesome. You know, so I'm just, I'm anxious to do it. Uh, I have, I have so much work. I mean, I have people. I have a waiting list probably. Oh now, wow. Because I, you know, my space is limited. Mm -hmm. so in there, and then I need people to help me out. You know, it's I have to limit. It's awesome. Is that no. great? I was hoping for the listening audience that you could explain what else is you're planning for the building. I know that you were doing custom repairs on motorcycles, but there's more planned. If your wife Wendy could come yes, up. And <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wendy. Um, the other piece would be um, a coffee salon, mm -hmm. which would be on the other half. And if you, I don't know if you guys have been inside of the building, but it is a concrete wall that would separate the motorcycle mm -hmm. portion from everything else. So once we found out um, about the building, I started doing a little bit more research because I've owned a hair salon um, in Belleville for probably since 2011. I had two locations in Belleville. So I couldn't really find, I knew what I wanted, but I couldn't really figure out how to put it together. So just after doing some research, after we found the building, I went down to North Carolina. There was a salon cafe that had identical to what I wanted. So I went down there for a week and I witnessed their operations, ask the manager and owners questions as to how I can make that happen in Romulus. So that was very, it was very worth it because it was like how I got to really see how to blend it together. So the way they had it separated, which if you guys had a chance to review the architectural plans, it's like, it's two things, but kind of like one, but because it is coffee in here, we have like some type of partition or separate, permanent partition or separation mm -hmm. that'll divide the two. But if a customer wanted to go head over and get some coffee while waiting to get their hair done, they could. But it wouldn't be like a back and forth access. They would be two different things. So, and I thought the coffee shop was important because one, I'm like, I love coffee. Like I can't <laughs> live without it. And when I went, and then in addition to that, I went to Portland, which is like one of the main places to learn about coffee. And it was America's Coffee, it's a coffee training company. And I went there for, I think it was 10 days and took their coffee training to learn how to run a coffee house. And because I was just a coffee drinker and lover, and it was like since my daughter's 26, so for the last 20 years, it's been one of my dreams to own a coffee shop. So I kind of went and figured out how to do that. And the thing about coffee is it's communal, and Romulus is a community base. And I want the coffee shop and the salon and also the bikes. We named the coffee shop portion Herman Grounds because it's kind of like grounds for coffee and grounds where we as a family work together. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be people's third place. You know, you want to be at home, you want to be at a place of worship, you want to be comfortable. So I want the coffee shop to be that place that people just want to come mm -hmm. to. And now we got a little bit of rethinking with post-COVID, because of course COVID wasn't initiated in there, but I'm confident that I can make the necessary pivots that'll make it work. Great. Thank you, thank you. Anybody, any other discussion? Um, I would, to the chair, if I may, um, to my colleague, Ms. You're going to have to take a number because I met them coming up the sidewalk. <laughs> so she's already said that uh, she would uh, do, and she told me exactly what she would do with this poof. <laughs> 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 so I'd like to say thank you so much. I love coffee. Mm -hmm. If my children happen to come to my home real early, get me out of bed, ring my doorbell, they have coffee in their hand because mm -hmm. they can't talk to me. Nobody can talk to me without, you know, my coffee. Yes. <laughs> and secondly, um, I love motorcycles. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very, very interesting. And if no one else has any discussion other than... I just have one comment. Okay. So to the chair, i just like to say thank you for taking an interest in the building mm -hmm. and for doing your homework. Mm -hmm. You know, we asked questions and you had answers. Yes. And and that's really, really great. And that's good for us to know exactly, you know, where you're coming from and like all the research you've done and, and how you're going to make it work. And I appreciate that. And, and again, and thank you and welcome. Chair, if everyone's finished, I'd like to make the motion to concur with the administration and grant authorization for the mayor, the clerk, to enter into the attached commercial lease agreement with Big Steve's Designs, LLC, for the lease of 35255 Goddard Road, Romulus, Michigan, 48174. Support. Support. Ms. Williams. 
It's been motioned by Ms. Webb, supported by Ms. Williams, for the, uh, to concur with administration and grant authorization for the mayor and clerk to enter into the attached commercial lease agreement with Big Steve Design, LLC, for the lease of 35255 Garden Road, Romulus, Michigan, 48174. Any more discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Webb. Yes. Ms. Williams. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Mm. Congratulations. Thank you. I'll be looking forward to my cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks for working with us on that. With uh, thanks for making the motion and getting it happen. And as you can see, we're excited. Uh, it's been a long, uh, long uh, haul. The um, the big success was getting, uh, and I can't do it without Wayne County's help. But that CDBG that fell under economic development, not our normal CDB dollars. So right. uh, with that, um, unless there's any other questions for me, that would conclude my report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Number six is the clerk's report. 6A for second reading and final adoption is budget amendment 20 slash 21 dash one. This budget amendment was introduced at the July 27th, 2020 council meeting. Um, Madam Chairman, I'll move for the second reading and final adoption of budget amendment 20 slash 21 dash. Support. Is that you still have? Yes. Okay. It's been motioned by Mr. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Roscoe for the second reading and final adoption of Budget Amendment 20-21-1. Any discussion? Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Ms. Williams. Yes. Ms. Webb. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. 6B for second reading and final adoption is Budget Amendment 20-21. Dash two, and this budget amendment was introduced at the council meeting of July 27th, 2020. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I'll make that motion for second reading and final adoption of budget amendment 20 slash 21 dash two. In motion by Ms. Roscoe, supported, I mean, Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Abdo for the second reading and final adoption of budget amendment 20 slash 21 dash two. Any discussion? Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. And the last item on, uh, under the clerk's report is a study session request from Stacy Page, the city treasurer, for Monday, August 10th, 2020, at 6 o'clock p.m. And this is for the purpose of reviewing a presentation given by Mr. Rich P Please. Uh, with invoice cloud services. Madam Chair, I'll make that motion. We schedule a study session for Monday, August 10th at 6 p.m. for Stacy Page, our treasurer. Support. Who is that? Okay. Ms. Webb. Thank you, Ms. Webb. Ms. Um, motion by Ms. Abdo, supported by Ms. Webb for the study session request from Stacy Page, our city treasurer, for Monday, August 10th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Any discussion? You're in uh, Ms. Abdo. Yes. Ms. Webb. Yes. Ms. Williams. Yes. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Chair, uh, Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you. That concludes the action items under the clerk's report. But before I close out, i um, just like to remind everybody, tomorrow, election day, mm. the primary election, um, just a few things. I just want to let everybody know that the polls will be open. We've had a few calls and people, uh, residents, uh, concerned and wondering if the polling locations will be open. And yes, all polling locations will be open. All, uh, we have 12 precincts within seven polling locations. Uh, polls open at 7 o'clock a.m. and close at, p uh, at 8 o'clock p.m. Um, we want every, there's just a few things. Um, we want to 
just alert our residents who vote at Barth Elementary School. Um, that's Precinct 11. Um, there's construction um, in the back there and where you would normally enter through the back, uh, the precinct in the gym, um, you will not have access there. You'll have to enter through the front doors of the school building. So again, Precinct 11, located at Barth Elementary School, you'll be entering through the front doors of the school building. Um, Hell Creek School, you'll uh, be entering through the side, through the back uh, of the gym, right there, the playground area, that hasn't changed. Um, Wick, El I'm sorry, Wick Road, the middle school, um, those are precincts one, seven, and 10. So as we all know, that there's a lot of major construction on Wick Road. So there, um, the detour or the route that we're, uh, that has been recommended for residents, um, it's down, it's going through Osga to access the middle school. So there's a couple of ways you can get there. Um, I, I think probably the easiest way is if you're going uh, south down Wayne Road to Goddard, take Goddard to Shook, Shook all the way up to McBride, turn left to McBride, and then McBride to Osga, turn left, and that'll take you um, straight uh, into uh, the, um, the access, right into the middle school. I took the route today, so everything is fine. You can always take Tobine if you wanna make uh, coming, make the right, uh, go, uh, I'm sorry, west on Wick Road, and if you wanna go down Tobine and kinda hit the curve, you know, to access Shook Road, you can do, you know, um, take that route as well. Um, but again, we wanna assure everyone that we will be um, complying um, with social distancing. Um, and the, our election inspectors have been trained. We've gone through a lot of training and they will be wearing masks and you will see face shields or some, sorry, sneeze guards and gloves and all types of things there um, at the precinct. So. Um, we're, we've done our best to make sure to ensure that all the election inspectors are safe as well as our community uh, working together so that everyone feels comfortable so that they can cast their vote um, on tomorrow. Um, finally, uh, or lastly, uh, AVs. Uh, we are a little over 58% of return. It probably wow. might be more after today, but uh, as of last night, we were at 58% return. Um, if you still have your ballot, we ask that you please uh, drop the, use the, utilize the drop box in front of City Hall. You have until eight o'clock. Do not take your ballots to the precinct to drop off your absentee ballots because they will not be accepted. And uh, you're gonna be asked to, to deliver your ballot here at City Hall. So we will be open, obviously, until eight o'clock. So again, we wanna thank everyone for your support. Mayor Burcroft, thank you. Um, the administration, uh, I can't say enough about our Department of Public Works. I think I've worn them out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Madam Chairman, yes. if, I can, if I can ask the first, what about the Oak Brook sub? Are they still gonna vote at the rack? Yes. Yes, all of the polling locations. Well, because I mean, the open. racks yeah, been closed. Yeah, I'm sorry. So. Yeah, I'm sorry, Councilman uh, Wadsworth. Yes, the rack will be open. That's precinct 12. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, back today, we were there setting up the precinct, and worked, would like to thank Andy working with them. Um, and also, the senior center, uh, that precinct five, uh, the precinct will be open. The polling location. So again, <coughs> all seven of our locations will be open. Want to thank the schools for working with us, uh, uh, Westbrook Estates, the old uh, Rudgate. Uh, everybody's been great. Everybody's been great. It's been a task because with the whole COVID, um, and we've all you know worked really hard um, so that we are uh, still maintaining de democracy so that everyone can exercise their right to vote, but in a safe manner. So again, thank you, and to uh, my team in the clerk's office, we are exhausted, but you know they're a great group of people and. Uh, uh, the, the, I call it the, the fabulous five, the women down there. We work really hard. So <laughs> again, thank you to everyone. Uh, Ms. For your I'm gonna go Ms. Williams and Ms. Yeah. yeah. I just would like to know, um, you, you gave the directions from uh, Tobine to Shook and <coughs> Osgood to McBride to Osgood. What about Coswell? You can't use Coswell to come up with? I don't know, you can't. 
And the only reason I know that for sure because I inadvertently did it today, not paying mm -hmm. attention. <laughs> it went down cock and all. If so I could to clarify that, I think yeah. didn't didn't the uh, all the precinct vote voters get a, a mm -hmm. letter sent to them on that, kind of giving them the route to take because with all the traffic and confusion, we didn't want people if they normally take a route. So that was spelled out in a, a letter that went out to them. So you're you're only able to head east on Wick or west? West. West. west? Okay. Mm -hmm. But the road is pretty. pretty I, I've bumpy. seen it. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want it. To, you don't so, want to take. So your they time. can still, if they want to go west on Wick, it, it, once they cross the tracks, you know, of course it's one way west only. They will have. Uh, it's rough. I'm telling you, I live there, it's really rough, but they will still have access. But the route that was preferred, that was sent out is the route that our clerk mentioned. Okay. Thank you. Ellen, if they don't, let's say they are trying to get to the poll and decide, hey, I don't want to do this, can they come to City Hall and get an absentee ballot? No. No? Okay. Today was the last day at 4 o'clock that we could issue absentee, absentee ballots. ballots. Okay. The so only, they're going to have um, to drive. Right. Only indivi uh, individuals who are registering for the first time, mm -hmm. um, then they would be eligible for an absentee ballot. But they would have to come to the clerk's office, mm -hmm. um, provide the proper documentation you know, uh, to register, and then they would have the option of voting an absentee ballot or um, going to the polls to vote. My next question goes to the mayor. Are we going to have this, do they anticipate having this construction a little further along before the November election? Uh, yeah, the plan is to be further away from the, the Bolton Middle School and Wick School. Um, they, they redirected their uh, construction, most of it back to Cogswell. And as you can tell, they're doing a lot of dewatering through that area. So what they're telling us is that uh, we should be fine. Um, we're, we're having, you know, basically weekly calls with them and, and our team as well as OHM are out there, but um, they're, they're saying they should be well beyond that. That'd be great. Thank you. Sure. And if there are no more questions concerning elections, uh, that concludes the clerk's report. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam okay. Clerk. Thank you. Uh, number seven is the treasurer's report, and I believe she has joined us via Zoom, and I'm going to take the mic Our treasure on campus. Question? I was wondering if she's here. If one of us can step. I up. have not seen her. I, I do not know. Uh, I can try to contact her. Yeah, if we can see if she is, and we can come back. Okay. We can, we can get, get back. We can move on and come back if she's here. Mm -hmm. um, then I will just announce. Uh, Madam Treasurer, if you are in the building here on campus and would like to address uh, City Council, uh, just let us know and then we'll come back and you can um, uh, have remarks. Mm -hmm. All right, um, number eight is public comment and this is the portion of our agenda that is set aside for um, our citizens that are in the audience and, and also for those uh, residents who have uh, join the meeting uh, via Zoom, and uh, you have three minutes to speak. Any additional time uh, will be upon consent of the chairperson. Again, if you have joined this meeting electronically, um, you will be acknowledged. We'll be using the raise hand uh, method, and uh, if you've called, then you want to press um, star nine. Um, and then using your Zoom meeting app, just use the raise hand method. Madam Chair, we do have two written requests to speak, and I also have a request to speak electronically. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to 
try the uh, we can the, the, the yeah, two that can. that are here until we kind of work out our audio issues. That Sounds we have. good. Okay. Yeah, let's go with those. Um, the first request I have is from Crystal Price. Okay. Council. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, I want to probably say you talk about, uh, Alan, I heard you talk about the elections are tomorrow, and I'm excited because I tomorrow will be the first time I, that I'll be voting mm -hmm. here in the United States, and I'm very excited about doing it. Um, but one of the things that I just, I came to City Council today because I wanted to know as a resident, um, something that I ran across um, trying to check out everyone and who is who and whatnot. That's what you're supposed to do is to check all the candidates. And I just want to know um, as a resident, how can you run for a judge when you owe back property taxes? How can you fairly judge others when you're not in compliance yourself? And what I found out as I was checking through all everyone and checking out all the candidates, one of the, can one of the candidates running for a judge um, Alexandria Taylor owes thousands of dollars in back taxes, yet she's running for judge to judge others. I don't understand this, and I wanted to find out or ask you to um, how does this work? You know, signs don't vote, people do, so how does this work? Can someone explain that to me? Madam Chairman, I would suggest that'd be a great question for the State Court Administrator's Office. Okay. They're the ones that set the rules and guidelines for that. That gotcha. wouldn't be City Council or City Government. Yeah, I have no clue. Yeah, you might want to um, direct it to the State, uh, you say the State? State Court Administrator's Office. Um, their number is 313-972-3300. Uh, they're a uh, branch of the state Supreme Court okay. and they're the ones that govern all the judges in the district court system okay so, so did you get that in that number no I, I don't have a pen so. oh okay well we'll write we'll write it down for you um, so yeah, we can provide it to you yeah we'll okay give it to so you th they're gonna answer the question like w what you know what as that's a their authority so I would hope they would yeah yeah because yeah yeah I don't know if anybody up here knows um, yeah, they probably okay, give you the best answer. Okay, because it would not be something that would be the integrity, of, like, wouldn't that be something that should have been done before people are candidates? Like, shouldn't that stuff be checked out, or is this how this works? I'm, that's what I'm asking. I don't yeah, understand. I'm not I don't sure. understand how this is working. Right. But I do want answers. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's vetted. Um, I'm not sure where she got the information on that, so well, I, just I would on, be careful I, on that. So. Uh, yeah. The information, I went online, and I checked out different okay. avenues and I went into the properties and her properties she owes so I don't understand how you can be a judge run for a judge and you're not in compliance yourself I don't understand that and I would like I would like the answers to that so, so the yeah, answer, we'll, yeah the we'll state court the administrator number. be the one who yeah. gives the answers to that and I'm not aware of any judge candidates that are behind any taxes but that would be a question for them yeah so we'll get you the number is that okay that's fine okay thank you okay thank you The next written request is coming from Sh the Shouds, and I'm hoping I pronounced your name correctly. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address. Um, My husband and I live. Proximity to the elementary schools, they barrel up and down the streets. Um, he drives a gravel train for a living, and so he kind of can gauge. I mean, somebody like me would be like, "What?" <laughs> but he actually can tell how much they are going for. Um, and also, I know one day I actually left my house and it was one way, so I went one way. And when I got down to the detour, they had not get through and now I had to turn around and backtrack and now I'm going the wrong way down. 
so I don't know. And I guess somebody had just went on the power and said that I sent off poorly. The guys were doing the job. I guess he said that they had sent out a green crew, an entirely green crew. So I don't know if he's part of the decision. I know you said you were in constant contact with them, so you might kind of like know. Not to mention the fact that they left it on the mailbox that they actually put it out. Mm -hmm. That is what they did, I guess. The reason I wanted to come and speak to the council tonight is because back in, I say January, I actually went to the Shell gas station right across the street from the high school. And while I was digging through my purse for some change so I could go in and buy a soda, well, witnessed a drug deal. Right here in front of me in broad daylight. Kind of sat in my car and waited until they left, went in, got my soda, came back out. As I'm on my way out, I ran into a Ron Evans officer. And I walked up to him and said, wow, if only you had been here minutes earlier, you could have seen what I just saw, and I told him what I saw, and he said, and I quote, get in there next time. And I just looked at him and I said, this is my town now. I don't want it back. And that response is just off the wall. I called the police commissioner, who unfortunately I was on medical leave, was told by the secretary, I'll bring it to the interim and they decide what they're going to do about this because when I described the young lady, I knew exactly what I was talking about. The lady that was out asking me, I followed up with another minute later. Oh, yeah, okay, well, I'll have him call. Nobody ever followed up with me. I don't know how you guys feel about drugs and Ron Evans. I don't know if it's I'm not trusting it. But it's bad enough where you're getting pot shops in Royal Oak, but for people to sit there what I can only assume is heroin right in front of me in the middle of the day across from a high school. To me, it is not acceptable. And like I said, I just wanted to make the council aware of what I saw, mm -hmm. of how it was handled or not, and how it was followed up on. Or not. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I'd like to comment on a couple yeah, of those first, uh, uh, you know, because these folks, they're my neighbors. They live across the street, so I never heard anything about the, the police. Uh, I mean, I, we, we did have a, a, a chief of police who was out on medical. I do have an interim. I'd like to have put in touch with you because that, that's not acceptable. I mean, uh, we have a lot of great officers. They're doing a lot of good. I don't know what if you happen to have identification that handled that one. We'd like mm -hmm. to address that for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I can speak also to the uh, the Wick Road. This is and council knows this is a, it's a Great Lakes Water Authority project. So they are they are the ones that are funding it and and proceeding and hiring the contractors and spending the money. But they work through our um, DPW and Roberto Scapatici has been working with them throughout this whole process. Uh, they, it's their job to keep their contractor uh, doing the right things, and, and we have addressed, I am aware of some of the speeding and issues. We had PD patrolling that area. We just redirected them. We had the trailer for a while. We basically were, you know, threatening them, telling them that we're gonna be writing them up if they continue that. Uh, they're now moving some of their construction uh, over back over to Cogswell because of the watering issue, you know, the wells like they have in front of uh, your house and mine. So, uh, but still, that, that just redirects them to that area. So we're actually patrolling that. Uh, but we have had some, uh, you know, some other complaints. Uh, we've had some complaints about speeding trucks and dust and others. The dust is more than taken care of. Now it's mud uh, right now. But uh, the speeding, we're, we'll definitely enforce it. There was a car there, I think it was Friday, that was an unmarked car right on Wick on the north side, uh, just uh, the other side of the tracks that was patrolling. Um, if you can help us with it, if there's certain times, uh, you know, the, the best way to get enforcement on anything is when our residents help us. So if there's something going on, uh, we'll jump on it. Uh, they can't be everywhere, wherever every speeder's going on, but we put them on notice that if they're going to continue to do it, then those drivers are going to get tickets. And uh, we were nice about it. We, they, we, we had the contractor contact the subcontractor who was doing the actual hauling. So please help us with that one. Uh, that that's uh, near and dear because you know again I'm right there as well too. So. Well, and you know those three big. I said I wasn't going to tell you. Up. That's you okay. Those three big birch trees right in my yard. Yep. It's almost like they they said okay bring the pipe back bring the pipe back yep we got it on their branches. 
Yeah, I didn't realize any of the birches. So anything that they damage? husband mentioned that to me when I was out there about the mail and I talked to him about that they thought it was mine at first I said well it doesn't matter whose it is you broke it mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, that we'll hold them accountable for putting you know the mailboxes back up when it's all said and done everything better be right we, we, we have the last sign off on that so if there's damage I would say that to any resident along that route because they're going Mr. Tyler Mr. up Cogswell Wick and going all the way out to the connector um, just west of Vining. So anything through that process, we're, we're you know, holding them accountable. Uh, there's some other jurisdictions that come into play with that. They're gonna be boring under the railroad tracks. Uh, so again, anything that comes close to our lines, um, we, we, you know, we're gonna hold them accountable. Roberto's done a great job. There were a couple um, water and sewer leads that uh, he made them go back and do work over that we don't wanna, once they leave, have issues with our residents. So, because it's our system mm -hmm. there. This is a water line. This is not a sewer line. I've had mm -hmm. a lot of people ask me, even though they're large lines. Uh, so I hope a couple of those try to answer, and I'll try to connect with you with our interim chief, if you can help us on the other. And you know what's funny? Yep. Well, I know that one thing I think home that I think does get printed, but I need my car. Who does the truck? I park in the middle of the damn driveway and walk across the street, and I think I ask some guy, how am I supposed to get in my driveway? How am I supposed to get in my driveway? And they're just kind of like, well, we'll call our supervisor. We'll get on it. Yeah. And I didn't know they were going to do that that day. Uh, they, you know, they have their own schedule with their contractor. But I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Let us try to work with you and improve it. And if it's not getting better, tell me, please. So I'll, I have no problem. We have the, you know, the top ear of the person at Great Lakes Water Authority, and I'll tell them, look, actually, Roberto's had to put stop work orders on them before. So. Mr. Wadsworth, Mr. Wadsworth, one. If I could just um, expand on, on the road, uh, my son lives down from the mayor, and he doesn't call the mayor; he calls me. And uh, <laughs> he's lost uh, two mailboxes. They sunk his is a driveway, and he was forced to take his not only his fifth wheel, his pontoon, and his boat up in the north and pay to have it stored because there's no way you would get in and out of there at all. And it's a mess, and we hope it gets put back. I mean, there's no ifs and buts about it. I mean, it's uh, but, okay. um, and but but when you know, as we have to, when we dump our mailbox and we were just in three foot, four foot down, and it's a mess with it. And he was like, I don't want to touch it. We'll just put one up. We'll and I keep and I keep telling the um, my son to call the mayor, but he keeps calling me, but. Uh, and you asked what we thought about dope or drugs. Obviously, it's a it's a cancer that you know eats at the fiber of our society, and that's my answer to that. Okay. Very cavalier. We're doing everything we can. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about it? Mm -hmm. I've got people that have I've got people that have told me since I voted not to bring marijuana in this town that, that they're not going to vote for me again. Well, we will. Michelle, hold on, Miss Williams. Yeah, and I would just like to say my niece lives a little past Oscar, but before you get to Kaiser, and she's having the same issue, so. We definitely need to make sure that we, uh, uh, Roberto, and I know he does a good, great job with staying on him, but a lot of times they had to actually walk over to Shook 
to get a ride to just get out of that area because they couldn't get out of their driveway. So. I've been afraid of that. <coughs> like I said, I mostly watch the Chicago and they move out of Chicago. Yes. They'll be over there by you, Tina. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> To the chair. Thanks for coming out. Thank chair. you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm Nate. Stout. Michelle. I would just like to say thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. If the residents there would come in or call the mayor or one of the council people to let us know, that contractor's job is to, first of all, when they are going to remove your driveway, they are to you a warning uh-huh they're to come to knock on the door you know ma'am tomorrow we will be removing this so that you will know now that's what they're supposed to be doing okay mailboxes yes they should have removed the mailbox and moved it someplace where they were not going to tear it down um, sometimes um, these um, uh, contractors will do things and they know better but if you go back to that contract it is going to state everything that they are supposed to do because you are and everyone involved in the city are paying the taxes and you need that respect I I just you know I just have this thing for contractors I know what they're supposed to do and the dust you should not have any dust Period. There should be a water truck on site at all times, the whole time that they are working out there. And those gravel train trucks, that right there is a lot of money when the police pulls them over and gives them a ticket. Trust me. <laughs> they do not want to pay that huge ticket. So um, if the police pulls one over, then it's, the word would spread, and you won't have to worry about them traveling like that. But you have rights. Now, getting back to that drug deal at um, the Shell Station, as a witness, you did correctly. You stayed in your vehicle. You called. You know, you, you informed the police officer. The only thing that I can say about the officer is, first of all, he was not there happen but yeah he knows things happen maybe he said it in a way that didn't sound too good but the police are up there a lot okay and I've, I've, I've seen them up there but I guess my concern is when you call and you don't get a response from anyone that's my concern I'm not concerned about that officer that said that you know well it happens all the time I'm concerned about the communication Mm -hmm. So I was informed of that, and unfortunately, yeah. in the interim, my father developed a very serious heart problem, which caused uh, me to basically get to go live at my parents' house three nights a week, four nights a week, all the time off with my sister. We were doing guard duty on my dad to make sure they thought it was going to die. So we were there for support for my mom to help take care of him. So this kind of got pushed out of my mind until dad passed his, now, now he's fine. Doing great. Thank you for asking. <laughs> but, um, but so it kind of went to the back of my mind. Can you speak in the mic? But thank you. I'm so sorry. I was talking. Uh-uh, that's okay. You were talking to me. That's all right. We were, we were having a conversation. I, I know. You know, we've had conversations, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. but in a way, thank you. Thank you so much, you and your hubby, for coming in. I know he knows about these double trains and all that, oh, gravel yeah. trains. And, uh, but I would like uh, for the, uh, like to request that the mayor, if somehow we can have a, one of the city inspectors to pop in and out over there on WIC, then that way that, you know, the residents will feel a little better. Yeah, absolutely. And Roberto's on the call. He heard all the comments. I didn't try to put him on the spot because of <laughs> technology. He could have filled in a lot more detail, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give him a download on it. We'll make sure we take action on WIC. I also will follow up with uh, Interim Chief Fonis. 
and make sure he makes contact just for future. So because we don't know, you right. know, the residents, you know, you guys live there. The mayor is here doing the day, so right. he doesn't really get to witness these things. So, you know, we're grateful for the neighbors down there, the residents who live there and who come in um, and let us know. But from now on, just call, you know, call up, call your mayor when he comes in at night. Hey. <laughs> Did you see the dirty look? <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't mind it. I talked to your husband, Dude, I was taking the garbage out. He told me about the mailbox. Uh, no, it, 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 all joking aside, it's, yeah. it's a serious matter. We want to make sure that it, we know there's going to be disruption, but we want to lessen that. And, and honestly, what I've heard from you tonight is that it's some of the little things like communication and how you communicate it mm -hmm. uh, that could have could have made a lot um, better improved communication. They do knock some doors. They're not perfect. They We have instructed them, uh, Councilwoman, to do that, and they have done some, but they missed, they've missed. they missed me on some because, you know, I, I've been surprised the day she talked about it, I couldn't get to the house for lunch because they were grinding up the asphalt. So I didn't know that was going to happen that day. Uh, I found out um, shortly as I tried to go down WIC. Uh, and so we got, you know, we got an update on what they were doing, but apparently that contractor did not, did not knock doors. Uh, Great Lakes Water Authority has been knocking doors when they can to give forewarning, but we're, they're definitely going to hear about this one as well. And and on that note, I'd just like to say, we have to tear down in order to build up. And I'm sorry for your inconvenience. That's okay. I know somebody will be out to detail my car when this is all over, <laughs> so it's all good. Tell you, it's not even worth washing mine. I can tell you that it's not. And now with the the dust control, it's like an oily substance. So maybe that'll help with the rust proofing. I don't know. But it's uh, but it's very sorry for the inconvenience and and ho don't I don't mind you you know let me know what's going on or holler across the street or call me here whatever. We'll do the best we can to to improve it. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I just want to thank, thank you Carol. again because you had some concerns, valid concerns, and, and not saying you know people don't, but just your presentation of your concerns, just the lightheartedness of it, even though we know they're serious. Thank you so much for that. Um, just really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Okay. Take care. Are we done? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, we do have one um, okay. request to speak electronically, and I I think I may have worked out okay. bugs here, and uh, let's see, keep my fingers crossed. Uh, we have a request from Tony Heimberger. Okay. And Mike's going to take, take it from there. Good evening, this is Tony Heimberger. Through the chair to Ellen Bragg. I would like to know, are we for the November election going to try having some more drop-off boxes like at each fire station so all four corners of the city is covered so people can actually drop their ballots off besides City Hall because the way the post office is working at this time, it's not a good situation. I just want to make sure that maybe we can get more boxes at the fire stations. If, if I may, through, if, if, through the chair. Um, one of the things, and Mr. Heinberger, and thank you um, for that comment, we have been um, having that discussion. Uh, I know the chief of staff, uh, we've talked about, you know, the potential of having, uh, placing more drop boxes, you know, throughout the city. One of the concerns that I have, especially with the fire department, and I did have this conversation with Chief Krause a while back, but it's just where would that be? Because, you know, let's just say uh, we have a drop box located, uh, I guess a middle belt there, but what if there's an emergency and they have to, you know, and someone's dropping off a ballot and then they have an emergency. So that, that's a concern that I have. Um, we are looking at other locations mm -hmm. um, to, you know, to potentially have some other drop boxes, you know, on the other side of town. Um, we just, you know, it needs to be on city property. Um, I'm concerned about security. Um, yeah. You know, that that's a big thing, yeah. you know, because see here, you know, where it's located, it's conveniently ro located and where you can just drive up and drop okay. your ballot. We'll see, you know, we have security, we have cameras, mm -hmm. and, and so this area is constantly being monitored, right. and so security is, is a big thing, right. you know, um, and so if something's way across town, uh, my concern would be security uh, of the ballot box. I mean, we could spend thousands of dollars on, you know, 
uh, a secure box, and mm -hmm. uh, but still, but we are um, looking into to that, Mr. Heimberger, and it is noted. Um, and so, you know, as we approach the November election and right. those things, you know, I will make sure that we notify council and the public concerning no, thank that. You. No, that thank was a good you. question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heimberger. Were there any more public comments? Um, if Mr. Heimberger has no more questions or comments, that is the only, uh, that was the last re okay. request. Close that out. Um, number nine is unfinished business. Madam Chair. Ms. Russell. I have a message from our treasurer, Stacy Page, and she would like to thank the council for approving her study session for August 10th. And also she said that she didn't have any other items underneath her report tonight. Thank you, Ms. Roscoe. Uh, you're the chair. Ms. Ms. Uh, last week it was mentioned, it was just mentioned in regards to um, postponing council meeting, the council meeting this evening because of the election. Mm -hmm. I would like to bring that up again. Mm -hmm. um, only because November the 3rd is an election. Mm -hmm. That means our clerk, her staff will be up until the wee hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a huge election. Mm -hmm. That's just a little bit much to put on the clerk's department. And it's nothing wrong with moving the meeting. We can move it to the 5th, which is on a Thursday, and then we can, the next meeting would be on the 10th, and then the 24th. But my, my, my thing is, it would make it better for all if we moved it so that we could have the 17th, the 10th, and then the 5th, because our meetings were running Thanksgiving week, which is the 24th. <coughs> so that would give even the council a break from, you know, going into the Thanksgiving week, because that's the 24th. Thanksgiving is on the 26th, and some people may want to go away or do whatever. So I would like to get a consensus from from my colleagues to see if they would want to postpone, well, not well, postpone and change uh, from the uh, first um, Monday, the second of November, to the fifth, which is a Thursday. Then we would return on the tenth. I'm sorry, the ninth, That's following Monday, and then have it back to back. You know, just like we we're, we're having it now so that we could be up the 24th. We would be free of the Thanksgiving uh, holiday, but mainly because it would give the clerk's office a little bit of a, you know, a little time. This is going to be a major election, huge. So I'm looking at the calendar, and uh, uh, that Monday is the second, November 2nd, the day before the election, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. right. Ninth, the you're the ninth is what did you propose? The fifth, the fifth, the fifth, I which is that, the third. Oh, that Thursday. Okay. So we could have it in the same week. Gotcha. And then, then we would have of, um, the ninth. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm confused now. You got me confused. No, sorry, no, sorry. First, second, and third. I got it. Okay. The fifth, the ninth, and the sixteenth. Mr. Wadsworth? Is that correct? Who's D, sir? It was, it's changed. Wayne County, I mean, that night uh, at, of the election, we'll be taking the results and everything down, so I wouldn't have anything to do right. um, with that on that Thursday as far as canvassing or anything. So um, the, the only thing is the packet that Thursday. Okay. So if the election is Tuesday, um, you, I, I only have like 24 hours to get a packet together for Thursday, just FYI. So as, unless it's a light agenda, it, you know, it's doable. Um, 
Ms. Ms. Adler, you're proposing the fifth and the ninth. I mean, do we really have business four days? I mean, that's like meeting four days apart. Uh, I'm just wondering. Through the chair, it doesn't really matter. We have to have three meetings a month, and um, if if we give the clerk permission, let her figure it out her in the mayor's office because the mayor does have a lot of things that you know he wants to bring to council. But I was just thinking if we we don't have one on the 23rd, so anything 23rd and above they can work that out, but they do need permission from the council. How about this, Madam Chairman, if we, with the, I'll work with the clerk's office and yeah. your input, we've got some time for November. Yeah. We'll try to look at what works best for the schedule. I know that Steve Hitchcock had had communication with our clerk and some communities do indeed um, not have their meeting. Um, I think he was okay if you were to take action on that. Um, but I'll, I'll coordinate with her, come back. There'll be some kind of recommendation. Okay. And then that gives you a chance to give some feedback and look into it. Okay. Uh, I can tell you the other uh, factor out there that we just don't know was the governor's orders. Yeah. I mean, a lot of tonight's confusion, guys, is that they changed the order to 10 people last minute after this meeting was already a go for public. Right. So we had to scramble to make this happen and uh, have people come in and out. And thank you to mm -hmm. Chief Allison for helping us with that and the rest of the team. And uh, there were some hiccups with us uh, being able to hear from the group on the call. They could hear us, obviously, but we couldn't. So we don't know what other governor orders or as the numbers change, uh, we're just adjusting uh, to those orders right. and we want to adhere to them. So that I think that gives us some time, Councilman Webb, to look at it and we'll determine what the orders are, how we can adhere to it, what works best for the election, because I agree it's a very important mm -hmm. election and we'll try to come back uh, with some kind of recommendation. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And if I can, Madam uh, Chair, I just want to say thank you for the consideration. Um, you know, just in preparing and um, especially yeah. with our electronic meetings and things. So um, it, it it would help. <laughs> 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 would help. Uh, you know, with that. Just and and again, um, you know, working with the mayor's. Uh, you know, the, mm -hmm. the mayor and and our city attorney. Um, we'll, and then we, as the mayor mentioned, we'll have enough time mm -hmm. to 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 get that out there yeah. and so we can notify the public as well. Teamwork makes the dream work. Thank you. If there's no more unfinished business, uh, number 10 is new business. Madam Chairman. Mr. Wadsworth. Could Mayor Allen, Binding, Binding Road, I see all the barrels up and down. Is that road falling apart or who's, who's repairing it? My so, so that was a, a TIFA project where we had to do some uh, joint repair or it would have been falling apart. So it was preventative. Uh, that's a high interest for development, so we're trying to protect the investment that we have there, mm -hmm. and they should be wrapping up shortly. Tiff of funds. Yeah. All right, fine. Thank you. Welcome. Communication. <laughs> I just want to do it. I know I did the chairperson, so I'm not trying to be selfish, um, but just um, talking about the elections, you know, um, just that it's a lot going on with the COVID-19, and just just to kind of piggyback on what Miss Ellen was saying. You know, just the, just the civility. Just let's just be kind to each other. Let's represent well as a city. Um, let's be patient. Let's be respectful, and let's be responsible, and let's be safe. Um, this is unprecedented times, and um, it just we all should just take ownership of that to just be kind and try to work together and live as peaceably as we can <laughs> during these times. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if there's Tana. no more communications. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Williams. And talking about <clears throat> talking about the election, you, you know, we say be kind, and I appreciate Councilwoman uh, Tally. But we first and foremost have to make sure we pray, mm -hmm. and we have to pray, and we have to mean what we pray, mm -hmm. regardless of what we want in our hearts. It's not for us. It's not for us. Mm -hmm. And you can't. You can't be angry and you can't be vengeful because something don't work our way. We're not kids anymore, we're adults. And we have to uh, learn how to accept things whether they're for us or against us. We, we, we have to learn how to accept that. And prayer works when nothing else will. Prayer does. And so we have to, you know, we, we talk about it all the time. It's seriously time to be about it. It really is. 
because the younger generation is watching us. And we say all the time what they shouldn't do, like the young lady, uh, and I don't know how old those folks was that was at the uh, gas station, but we can't tell the younger generation that stands behind us to do the right thing when they don't see us doing the right thing. We need to be that example. Mm -hmm. You know, they put us here to do the right thing, and, and I'm not saying nobody up here is doing anything wrong. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, you know, it's so easy to say be nice. And then it's a whole nother job to, to actually do it. So I say the first and foremost thing that we need to do is make sure we keep prayer in our hearts and in our minds. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Any other communication? Number 12 is adjournment. Oh, moved. Support. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Okay. It's been motioned by Ms. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Roscoe for the adjournment of this meeting. Mr. Wadsworth, Ms. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Ms. Williams. Yes. Ms. Webb. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Chair votes yes. We are adjourned.